Market watchers do not expect the instability on the Tokyo Stock Exchange to affect opening prices on the European and New York Stock Exchanges tomorrow. In local news, police and investigators from the Ministry of Labor are still trying to piece together details of the tragic accident that took the life of a 37-year-old Indigo Falls man last night at the General Forest Products Mill. Dead is William Powell, a lifelong resident of Indigo Falls. Emergency crews took the call just before 10.30, after Powell was found by co-workers. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the Indigo Falls Health Center. No word yet from investigators as to the cause, but sources close to the investigation tell Action News that Powell was apparently struck down by lumber moving on an automated conveyor line. District Coroner Henry Bullock is expected to call an inquest into the death. As you know, one of our employees was killed in an accident on our stacker line last October 7th. The victim was, as again I think we all know, William Powell, one of our Sawyers. And he has been with us for, had been with us for 14 years. I should mention at this point that the victim was fully trained as an operator and that our records confirm that he had received lockout training two years ago and a refresher course as recently as last April. It is important to note at this point that the people who first responded to the accident, uh, Kevin Shuchuk, the forklift operator, and Henry Cole, the assistant plant manager, both reported that the controls of the stacker panel were in the on position when they reached the scene. Uh, Mr. Sucha clearly remembers seeing the green lights in the panel, and Mr. Cole personally turned off the controls after the accident. He also locked the panel as well as locking and tagging the electrical box before turning the keys over to myself. The padlock issued to the victim for the purpose of locking out the electrical box was found attached to one of his belt loops. The electrical box was in the on position. The engineering department has completed a thorough examination of the stacker and its related equipment. Their finding after an exhaustive study of the situation is that all of the equipment at that location was functioning normally at the time of the accident. They report that from the position of the partially completed stack that struck the victim, the only possible scenario is as follows. That something, possibly the victim's body, came in front of the photo cell that is designed to sense when a stack has reached its predetermined completion size. This triggered a relay, which in turn caused the live rollers under the stack to become actuated. This caused a stack of lumber to move forward and strike the victim. The stack was found on the live rollers at a position approximately 1.2 meters from its original position. Now, experimentation subsequent to the accident has demonstrated that this is consistent with a momentary interruption of the photo cell. Apparently, a completed stack causes the relay to remain in the closed position, but the stack in question was not of sufficient height to allow this. Evidently, when the object that uh, caused the photocell to become actuated was removed, the relay opened and the power to the live rollers was cut off. We uh, have to conclude that the stack of lumber initially struck the victim's left foot and pinned it against one of the rollers in such a way as to prevent him from jumping clear or being pushed out of the way. The stack of lumber simultaneously struck his thigh with great force and threw him down onto the conveyor with a whiplash effect. This accounts for the severity of the injury. <laughs>